What are we doing? Okay, today we're going to take a look at the basic Atwood machine, just like we've seen before. This is a block sitting on a level surface, connected by a massless string which runs over a frictionless pulley. That string runs down to a second block which is hanging from that string. Well, what we're going to do today that's a little bit different is we're going to throw friction in here. Not in the pulley, but friction between the block and this horizontal surface. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and say there's some coefficient of friction between the block and the surface that is mu s for static and mu k for kinetic friction. These are two different values. What we're going to go through and do is derive an equation to see whether or not this system is going to move. And then if it does meet the conditions to move, we're going to find the acceleration of the system as it moves forward. So the first thing we're going to do simply to keep our lives easy here is establish a positive direction of motion. This positive direction is going to be to the right for this block and downward for this hanging block. The first thing I want to do is go through and look at all the forces acting on each of these blocks. And that's going to help us understand exactly what's happening in this problem. So here we go. For this hanging block right here, there's gravity, or the block's weight, acting downward. We know that force by gravity is going to be m2 times g. And it's directed straight downward. Additionally, there's going to be the tension in the string acting upward. Now, we don't exactly know the value for the tension in the string. It depends on what this system does. So I'm just going to call this t for the moment. Now, because this is a frictionless pulley, because the string has no mass, the tensions at opposite ends of the string will always be the same. As soon as we start putting mass in the string or friction in the pulley, that's not going to hold true. But right now, we're looking at the, the somewhat simplistic or basic case where there's no friction here and this has no mass. Looking at this block up here, we have the weight of this block, that is the force by gravity. That's gonna be m1 times g, the acceleration due to gravity. Now, because this block is sitting on a horizontal surface, it's not accelerating vertically, and that means the normal force upward between the block and the ground is going to need to be equal in magnitude to the force by gravity. So this is going to be m1 g. We know these two forces have to be equal because no matter what occurs in this problem, this block is not going to accelerate vertically. It may be pulled to the right, it may not move anywhere at all, but these two forces are going to have to cancel each other out. Now, what makes this problem different from the other problems that we've seen, or the other basic Atwood machine, which if you haven't looked at, I suggest you go back and look at, up there, is friction. Friction is going to resist the motion of this block. So we're going to show friction acting between the ground and the block to the left. I'll just call this FR for friction, or FF, depending on what sources you look in. I'll call it FR. Now this could be static or kinetic, just depending on whether the block is sliding, in which case it's kinetic, or sitting still, in which case our friction is static. So like I said, the first thing we're going to go through and do is look at the conditions that are required in order for the system to move. Now in the situation where the friction is large enough where this block doesn't move, that means this block is not going to move either. And so what we get is a nice neat balance of, of forces on things. The downward force by gravity trying to pull this block and this block with it is going to be canceled out ultimately by friction. And I'll show you how this works. 
the downward force by gravity, if this block is not accelerating, is going to have to be equal to the tension upward. And this tension is always going to equal that tension. So that means the force forward on this block right here is going to be equal to the weight of the hanging block. And if the force forward on this block is equal to the weight of the hanging block, but yet this block is not moving, that means the friction force backwards must equal the weight of the hanging block. Ultimately, this, 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 and this force are all equal in magnitude, the tension being internal to the system. So ultimately, what we see is when this force equals this force, the system is going to remain at rest. Now, the system will begin to move if, and this is the condition we're trying to produce, if M2G is greater than the friction force. That's going to be static friction because our block is not going to move. So if M2G can overcome static friction, friction being mu, in this case mu s, times the normal force. If we meet this condition, then the system will accelerate. Acceleration will not equal zero. If this block hanging over here is not heavy enough, it's not going to be strong enough to overcome static friction. And if it can't overcome static friction, well, then this whole system is going to sit at rest. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at what happens if M2G is in fact greater than mu s. In order to do this, we're going to solve this problem almost exactly like we did the basic Atwood machine without friction, and that is we're going to look at each block individually. So let's start with this block up here, M1. We're going to look at the sum of all forces on block M1 within the x-axis. Vertically, we know the forces are going to cancel each other out. Within the x-axis, we have T forward, and backwards, there's a friction force. Now we can expand this term out a bit, but I want to also recognize that these two forces are the net force on the block right here. They're going to cause the block M1 to accelerate at some rate A. What we have here is Newton's second law. Expanding this out, and really expanding friction out, we have T minus our friction force, which is going to be mu K, because remember, we're allowing this system to move. We assume we have met this first condition where we've overcome static friction. Now the block is moving, so that means we're dealing with kinetic friction. Times our normal force, which is M1G, so T minus our friction. It's going to equal M1A. Next, we're going to look at this block over here, our hanging block. We're going to look at the sum of all forces in block two in the y-axis. Now remember, we chose down as positive here, and that's consistent with forward or to the right being positive with this block. Remember, these two blocks need to move in tandem with each other. As this one moves right, this one must move down. Or as this one moves left, this one must move up. So keeping in mind our positive direction here is actually downward, we're going to have the weight of the block, that's M2G, minus t equals m2a. Again, we've simply set up Newton's second law and applied it to block two. And you'll notice if we look at this, we have one, two equations with two unknowns, or two unknowns being the tension of the string as well as the acceleration. Now, I'm not concerned with calculating the tension of the string at this point. Uh, all we're trying to do in this problem is get to the acceleration of the system. So the easiest way to do this is to rearrange this equation for tension and substitute it in up here. So in rearranging this, we get tension is equal to m2g minus m2a. And we'll substitute this in up here. So combining this equation and subbing it in here, we get 
Remember, we're trying to solve for the acceleration, so I'm going to pull this term over here. And rearranging for A, we see... This is the result to the basic Atwood machine with friction. So as long as we meet these conditions, there's going to be acceleration. Anytime there is acceleration, it will follow this function. It's important in this problem to recognize static friction plays in when we're trying to find whether or not the system will accelerate. Kinetic friction is at work when we're trying to find the actual acceleration of the system. If you look at this, you'll notice what we have are the two external forces acting within the axis of motion in this problem. We have M2G, that is the weight of block M2 pulling everything in the positive direction. Then we have friction, or mu K M1G, acting in the negative direction, trying to pull everything in the opposite direction, or slow it down, really. What we have is the net force on the system. And that net force is acting on some mass, causing there to be some acceleration. You'll also notice if we reduce mu k down to a value of zero, this entire problem boils down to the frictionless basic Atwood machine. So in this problem, we've determined the conditions for motion as well as the actual acceleration for motion. And that's it for now.